just did, let's look at that one. We'll do the same exact thing. So here's number two. Temporarily we set that equal to negative two. Temporarily set the equal to negative two. How we find our x-intercept is we cover up everything except the x. So we cover that up. What's my x-intercept? To find the y-intercept, I cover up everything except the y, including that sign. So I get 3y equals negative 2. Oh, no. Is that okay? Do I leave it like that? No. What do you do? Okay, we can do that. Is it okay to have a fraction? Yes. Let's see about that. Let's see about plotting this. Let's see if I get my numbers right, too. My x-intercept is negative 2. That's right here. Make sure you know your negatives and your positives. If you're putting negative 2 over here, you have the wrong idea, right? It's going to be a completely different looking line. So negative 2, negative 2 on the x-axis. Negative 2 thirds, it's not up here, it's down here. Where is negative 2 thirds? Is it bigger? Th is it below negative 1 or above negative 1? Below. Oh, negative 1. Above, sorry. Just a little bit above. So about maybe right there. Do you see that point? So here's negative 1 and negative 2. We're just a little above that because we're at negative 2 thirds. So far so good? Yes, no? Yes. We got fractions. It's okay. We can deal with fractions on a number line. Negative 2 thirds is just between 0 and negative 1. Can I draw my line? Let's connect these two purple dots that we have. That's supposed to be straight. Right? It's not for me. It's supposed to be. I can't make any better. I already drew it. And then we still have to check one point. What point are we going to check here? Notice how we're completely ignoring the, the, the black shading we just did. We're just working on the purple stuff, stuff now. It's like doing two problems at once. You're just looking to see where they overlap. So we're still check zero, zero. Remember, we're checking it now in number two. Zero plus three times zero is less than or equal to negative two. Or in other words, zero is less than or equal to negative two. You suppose that's true or false? False. Zero is less than negative two. No, I'd rather have no money than owe two dollars, right? That's not true. This is, this is false. Zero is not less than negative two. You still with me, folks? Uh -huh. So again, we check this point. Did this point work? No. no. So we're not going to shade, look what we're looking at. We're ignoring this black shading, just the purple line. Are we going to shade the top half or the bottom half? Bottom. Definitely bottom. This side was false. <clears throat> this side has to be true. So we shade all of that stuff. Now again, here's what the shading represents. Please watch carefully. This is where your interpretation, okay? You've got to know what this means. See how there's no shading here? Mm -hmm. If you plug in any of these points, remember these are points, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. If you plug in any of these points, they are not going to work. Not going to work in either one of those inequalities. If you plug in these points where just the black shading is, they are going to work in this inequality, but not in this one. If you plug in this, where just the purple is, they're going to work in the second inequality, but not the first. If you plug in these points where the shading overlaps, they're going to work in not only the first one, but also the second one. That's our solution. They're tied together with that bracket, so our solution set is right here. That section. Do we have to write it like that? Well, you, you can spell it out. I'm lazy, but yeah. Write like solution set or something. But that's something. what you want. I want that. I want you to identify where the solutions are. Oh. It doesn't ask for that in the book, but I want to see it. Okay. Can we just shade this that part and show that one? Um, that's fine as long as you put solution set. I don't care. But I want to see that you understand those are the solutions. Wait, so 
Right, if we just want to show that solution set, I want to shade that in, do we have to do the other ones too? The ones that show that one work for one function? You can if you'd like. I mean, I, I, ultimately that's what I would like to see is you, you understand that, you know, this, uh, this works for all these points and this works for all these points, but together they work for just those points. That's ultimately what I want to get across to you guys. Uh, so I, I would like to see it that way. If you want to shade just this part and you understand this concept, that's fine. Just understand that that is the solution set. Now, if you shade the wrong one, then of course I give you no credit for that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another idea. If you just happen to shade one of them wrong, then you're going to get zero credit. You don't want that. Okay, let's try one more in our time remaining. You'll see these go pretty quick, right? Not too bad. Let's look at number one first. You need to be able to identify this. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, is the cover-up method going to work for number one? What do you think? Is the cover-up method going to work for number two? Yes. Definitely. So number one, we temporarily set it equal to y. This is pretty much in slope-intercept form already. All I've got to do is flip them around. So I will have y equals 4x. Kind of nice. No, not even any extra work on that one. Can you all tell me what is my y-intercept for this problem? Zero. Zero. And we, we got that because there was no constant. There's no constant here. We know we're crossing at the origin. Not if you're okay with that. Okay. What's my slope? So up or down? Up how many? Over to the one. We got that. So four over one, the intercept was zero. Go up 4, go to the right 1 because it's a fraction 4 over 1. We graph our line. Do I leave it solid? Do I make it dashed? Everybody? Solid. Good. And can I check a point? Can I check 0, 0? No. What do I check? 0, 1. 0, 1. Okay. Check 0, 1 in this. 4 times x is 0 here. 4 times 0 less than or equal to y equals 1. 0 is less than or equal to 1. Is that true or is that false? True. 0 is less than 1. That's true. Here's what you did. Watch on the board here. You checked this point right there. You checked 0, 1. 0 for x, 1 for y, and that said that that point was true. That point's true. Do I shade, let's call this a left. Do I shade the left half plane or do I shade the right half plane? The left half plane. The left half plane. Because that was true, right? That point's on that left half plane. I'm going to shade all this stuff. Okay, we got one more. Number two, same idea, same exact stuff. We're going to temporarily set it equal to nine. Cover up method's going to work. So for my x intercept, I cover that up, I get x equals 9. For my y intercept, I cover that up, I get 3y equals 9. Or if I divide by 3, I get y equals 3. That's kind of nice. Except that 9 is way out there. x equals 9, that's way over here. y equals 3, that's up here. 1, 2, 3. And then I graph the line. Kind of a line. Hey, I wasn't able to check 0, 0 here. I had to check 0, 1. Can I check 0, 0 here? So you can use two different points. You don't have to use the same point. I'm, remember, I'm ignoring all the black graphing right now. I'm just looking at the purple graphing. So I can check 0, 0 there. If I check 0, 0, it's in the original inequality. 0 plus 3 times 0 is greater than or equal to 9. 0 is bigger than 9. Is that true or is that false? false. Definitely false. So we checked 0, 0 this time. 
zero, zero was false. Am I going to shade the bottom or the top half plane? This was false. Do I shade the bottom or the top? Definitely the top. Can you see my solutions? Yeah. All these points will work in both of our employees. How many people feel okay with what we talked about today? Do you guys feel okay with these examples? Yeah. Good. So we're going to work on graphing some linear inequalities. And what we realize is, is basically this is just two inequalities in one. If we can graph the first one and we can graph the second one, that's really all I'm asking you to do. I'm just asking you now to put them on the same x, y axis. And that, that's pretty much it. So let's look at our first inequality. I need you to be able to realize a couple things about this. Firstly, with our first inequality, let's call this one number one. Am I going to be able to graph that with the cover-up method in standard form like we've been normally doing? No. Why? It was well, not in standard form first, but even if it was in standard form, what number would be off here to the right? Um, you, well, you would, you would normally have a constant like this one, but up here, do you have a constant? No. So that means the cover method is not going to work. So when we do this, and we call this one number one, and we call this one number two, if we work on number one first, sure, we're going to temporarily set it equal to y. We temporarily make that equal sign. Do we ever do this anyplace else besides this one little part? No. Ever? No. Never. Just, just here. We temporarily set the equal. This is just so that we can graph it, basically. <clears throat> and if we cannot do the cover-up method here, it, even if you subtracted y, you'd have 2x minus y equals 0. When we, we, we talked about this last time. If you covered up the 2x, you get y equals 0. Cover up the y, you get x equals 0. That just gives you one point, right? You can't grab a line with one point. That's not good. So the other option was, whenever you cannot use the cover-up method, we're going to put this in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. In our case, it's kind of nice. We have 2x equals y. Let's just flip-flop that equation. y equals 2x. We already have that thing in standard form. That's great. I'm sorry, in uh, slope-intercept form. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's graph this line. Can y'all tell me what is my slope for that function? Great. Someone else tell me what is the y-intercept for that function? Good. Zero. Zero says I'm crossing at zero. Hey, that should make sense because that's the whole reason why we're doing this process, right? Because we know it crossed at zero. Actually, instead it crossed at zero twice. We have x equals zero and y equals zero. That's what we would have got with the cover-up method. Uh, review that from last time. We, we have, have already talked about that. So that says, okay, we're crossing our y-axis at zero at the origin. Next up, we're going to use our slope to find the next point. Again, what is my slope? Uh -huh. Two over what? One. Okay, are we going to go up two or down two then? Up two. And over to the... Right one. That's right there. We'll graph our line. Do I leave it solid like it is, or do I need to make it dashed? What do you think? Yeah. What tells you that? OK, so we're not looking really right here, right? That was just our temporary equals. We're looking back up here at my inequality. That says it's not equal. It doesn't have that little equals part. So I need to make that a dashed line. Am I done with that? What else needs to be done on this problem, folks? We need to check something. Why do we need to check something? What else do we need to do to make this graph look appropriate? Okay, so we need to check a point. What point do we typically check? Zero, zero. Can we check zero, zero? No. No, it's on the line. It's not going to tell us anything. So what point do we check if we can't check?